This started as a quick tyre rotation, but on closer inspection I noticed fine metal particles on top of the brake caliper, which normally means trouble. I wasn't wrong, the outer brake pad had very little brake pad material, but the inner was out totally and the disc was badly scored. New discs and pads were now paramount. Other than a trolley jack, you'll need the following main items for this job. A set of brake pads and discs, 13, 17, 18 and 36mm sockets, 7mm hex socket for the slide pins, 10mm spanner for the bleed nibble, a brake cylinder rewind tool and a torque wrench able to torque up to 280 Nm. So you'll need some gloves really and a face mask when cleaning the brake caliper. Also 17mm socket for the road wheels. A little screwdriver just to ping the clips out if they come out. 7mm socket and a low profile one ideally for the lower slide pin. 10mm spanner for the bleed nipple. A brake rewind tool for the piston. A strap to hold the caliper because you shouldn't hang it onto the pipe. 18mm spanner and socket. Some grease for the slide pins. Some thread lock. Some nice new brake pads. These are pad 1195 from APEC. Some new discs. Make sure you've got the ABS ring on them if you have the ABS system. And these have the bearings inside. So you replace the bearing as well. And there's the ABS ring. These are DSK2234. And you also need new hub nuts and a new cap. Hub nut is especially important. A hammer and chisel to remove that cover. And that's a 36mm socket for the hub nut. It's quite a big one. You will need a big breaker bar to remove that. And a decent sized torque wrench. It's better go up to 280 newton meters to tighten it back up. And some brake cleaner to remove the oil that would already be on the disc from the factory. Some brake fluid for topping up. And a brake collection tube with your 10 millimeter spanner. To avoid any possible accidents, it's best to chock the front wheels as our next action is to release the handbrake to work on the rear wheels. Now to release the handbrake, we need to make sure the ignition's on and then we pull the lever and push the button at the same time. And now it's released, you get a warning on the dashboard, parking brake is off and that then turns red. Jack up the car on the seal, remove the rear near side wheel. Don't forget to loosen the wheel nuts before lifting the wheel off the ground. Use a 17mm socket and breaker bar. Make sure you put the head of the trolley jack on the lip of the seal and not on the actual bottom panel because you can dent that with the weight of the car on it. I'm going to use an impact wrench so I don't need to loosen the wheel nuts first because it will just bang them off. So now the wheel's off we can actually see what we've got to do. As you will soon see if the spring clip hasn't been removed for a while you may have a game of patience on your hands. I removed the hub nut um, cover first purely because I wanted to confirm that the nuts didn't rotate with the disc um, before I started removing all the brake components.
and as you can see it's stationary so there's no problem there okay what should have just been a case of ping the clips out has now turned into a, quite a major game because the metals are different you have aluminium caliper and steel pin you get galvanic corrosion happen um, so you're going to have to work at this very carefully um, and just keep wiggling away until you can get them out if you go too hard with it you will break or shatter the pin um, and then you'll have to try and drill it out and obviously then buy a new pin I think it took about 10 minutes to remove these two pins. Um, so I used a combination of using pliers to try and wiggle it backwards and forwards. So give it like a rotation. Um, then a screwdriver to try and pull on it. Then a small hammer to keep tapping it back in. Pull it slightly out. Tap it back in. Twist it. And if you keep working at it, eventually it seems to come out thankfully. It's certainly easier to keep working at it than having to resort to a pillar drill and try and drill that pin out because it's also hardened. So the patient's paid off, that's one pin out. So as long as we can get the second one out without, without it breaking, then all, all's good. So I kept squirting plus gas, which is like a releasing fluid for bolts. Um, and then eventually it worked. Having lost around 10 minutes to a spring clip, let's hope the rest goes more smoothly. To remove the caliper, you need pliers to remove the brake cable and a seven millimeter hex socket, ideally low profile. So we remove the two plastic dust covers off the slide pins like so and then using a seven millimeter hex we can undo the slide pins which aren't in very tight i think they're only about seven newton meters so take out the top one we'll speed this bit up and then using a little screwdriver you can normally just push it back out like so those will need cleaning. Now the lower one is tucked away inside a steel box section. So this can be a bit troublesome. Um, so, but if you use a low profile 7mm, I've got one like fitted inside a spanner. Um, and then you can get in there quite easily then, as so. And out that one comes. As so. So we now need to remove the caliper. And if there's a slight lip on the disc, then you may need to wiggle this around for quite a while. Um, pulling and pushing, um, levering, but eventually it will come off. And don't forget, you do need to pull the handbrake cable out, as seen here. There it is. Just pop that out and pull it through, like so. Speed this bit up again. And then off it comes. Now we do need to strap the caliper up because you don't want to be leaving the weight of the caliper on the actual pipes themselves. So with the caliper out of the way we can now withdraw the brake pads. So there's something on that. This one's basically completely gone. But saying that in fairness these discs were and pads were changed about 55,000 miles ago. So they've actually lasted quite well. 
So using an 18mm socket and breaker bar, remove the brake mounting bracket from the hub carrier. These can be quite tough because they are done up to 105 newton meters and they also do have some thread lock on normally. Now the bottom one you need to watch out for because I used a ratchet spanner on the bottom as you'll see and then what happened was it got trapped between that metal box section. So then the only way I could get the ratchet spanner back out was to take the main hub nut off um, so that the disc could come away and let me get my spanner back. So you might be better off using an open-ended spanner on that bottom one. So to remove the hub nut is a 36 millimeter socket and one big breaker bar or a very strong person. I needed a breaker bar. I get my spanner back. Make sure you don't damage the ABS sensor where you can see the black wire. And there's the ABS magnetic ring on the old disc. Do a bit of gentle cleaning and we need to wind the brake caliper piston back in. The bleed nipple is 10 millimeters. When cleaning around the hub carrier, um, make sure you don't actually damage the ABS sensor because it is obviously very delicate and especially the wire. So try and avoid that area. Then onto the brake caliper, we need to undo the bleed nipple. Now you need to be careful here again because these seize in and if you put too much pressure on, they snap. Um, and then again, you'd have a big problem. Um, so I tend to just give it some very gentle taps with a hammer just to shock it. And then it will gradually loosen. Try tightening it, untightening it back and forth until it comes loose. So we now need to wind the caliper piston back in. So if we get the spanner ready on our bleed nipple, our collection jar, and then we need to put the rewind tool onto the piston, um, open that spanner, and then turn it clockwise so the piston's back inside the housing. But first we do need to check that the rubber boot isn't uh, damaged or split or anything because that can allow water to get in and corrode the piston um, and then you can end up with a sticking caliper so just give it a quick check over all seems okay so then on to rewinding it back in So it's a case of opening the bleed nipple. Mine's still a bit stiff here, so I'm going to move it backwards and forwards a bit 
just to try and make sure it's nice and loose. Okay, so now winds the piston back in and out comes the old brake fluid. There we go. That went in quite nice and easy. And then don't forget to tighten the bleed nipple as soon as that piston's back in. Okay, so that's now ready for the brake pads to fit back in. When tightening the bleed nipple back up, make sure you don't over tighten it. Very easy to do, but it's only about seven Newton meters, so it's not that tight. and pop the little rubber dust cover back on. The new brake disc can now be fitted onto the clean stub axle with a new nut. The nut requires a 36 millimeter socket and must be torqued to 280 Newton meters. So here's the new brake disc. And there's the protection cap that protects the ABS ring, which is that part there. And there's the sensor. So we simply slide the disc onto the stub axle, gently push it on, and then put the 36 millimeter nut back on. And remember, this nut must be new. You mustn't reuse the old one. So torque wrench set to 280 newton meters. So now to tighten this up. I then smear a little bit of grease on the new cap and then tap it back into position with a mallet, like so. You will need to clean the new brake disc with brake cleaner because the manufacturer will have covered it in oil to protect it while it's in storage. Before putting the brake mounting bracket back onto the hub, I wire brushed it all with my die grinder and a brass wire brush and also remember to wear eye protection and something to protect your lungs from the dust. Now that the mounting bracket is nice and clean we can bolt this back in place. Now the two bolts are worth cleaning the threads first because there's still some old thread lock on there and we don't want that on there as well. And I'll now apply a small amount of the red which is the stronger of the thread locks. Like I say not a lot, just a little ring to go around the bolt. Like so. And the same again for the other bolt. Just a small ring. So 
we can tighten those two bolts up and then we will need to use a torque wrench and tighten them to 105 newton meters and the top one's quite easily accessible so no problem there The bottom one is harder to access, as we found out with the spanner. Now, you can do it using a crow's foot, um, but make sure you have it slightly less than 90 degrees um, in relation to the torque wrench, otherwise you'll be increasing the torque you're applying. Okay, so with the mounting bracket now mounted correctly, we can turn our attention to putting the new brake pads in. Looking at the difference between the old and the new, quite considerable, isn't it? Notice how the new one's also chamfered on the leading and trailing edges. So the one that fits onto the piston actually has like a metal spring clip at the back. So you basically sort of slide that over the piston. There's like a lip on the piston and it slides onto it and it should stay in place. Now I'm going to use a soft um, wire brush just to clean through where the slide pins go just to get rid of any of the dirt and debris. As you can see, there is some debris in there. Because we've got to re-grease this. I like to add a little bit of metal-free grease to the contact places where the pads and the housing interact. Um, you shouldn't use copper grease if you have an ABS system um, because obviously it contains copper um, and could possibly cause some malfunction of the ABS system. So I only add a very thin smear to these edges where they contact the housing. And make sure you don't get any on the actual brake pad material. So this is the rear one and as you can see, if you don't drop it, <laughs> um, it has two springs on it and you just push it over the piston and it should the clip into place like so that strap's sort of in the way a bit might need to take that off and there we are it's in place now and do the same again for the outer pad And a little bit on the underside, on the contact points of the caliper, just there. And now we can remove the strap and put the caliper back into position. Don't forget to push the brake cable through, like so, like that. So the guide pins, I tend to use some very fine emery paper and just to clean off some of the residue 
that tends to stick on over time with the heat. And then I clean that up and put a bit of that grease onto there as well. This is Cerotec grease um, by Mintex and it is specifically for disc brakes. And then the same again for the other slide pin. The slide pins don't need to be tightened up too tight. It's only seven newton meters, so it's very low. Now you've also got the handbrake cable. We need to just pop that back over onto the caliper. So the brake now works again. And then we're on to the spring clip. Now for the spring clip, I will use a bit of copper grease. I think bearing in mind how much trouble it causes if you can't get the pin back out it might be worth just putting a little bit of copper grease on those two pins. And just try and push a little bit into the holes. I use Ceratec back on the other two contact points though. Hopefully they won't seize in again too quick. Now to activate the electric handbrake and check it locks the wheel. Now everything seems okay, we can refit the road wheel using the 17mm socket. These need to be torqued to 105 newton meters. Thank you for watching and hope this helped some home mechanics out. Please see part 2 for the other wheel.